This is a tiny camera. I'm going to look inside Chris's head with it. Now, you must never put anything in your ears or you could cause permanent damage. We can only do this because we're doctors. Oh, that's great. That is Chris's eardrum. Lovely. OK, Chris, what I want you to do is close your mouth, plug your nose, and now blow out gently. Oh, that's really good. That's lovely. So what you can see there is Chris's eardrum bulging. Now, the eardrum is a very thin membrane which acts like a drum. That's why it's called the eardrum. It vibrates when sound waves hit it, but it has another important job. It protects the very delicate middle and inner ears behind it. But there's something else lurking inside your ears that we want to show you. Tell you what's on, give me the camera and I'll have a look at your ears. <laughs> Can you see that? gooey, yellow, browny, crumbly stuff. That is Zahn's earwax. How much do I have? A lot more than me. That's great, because earwax is in our ears for a good reason. But what is earwax? And why do we have it? Well, we're going to show you. Yep, I can see right through to the other side. What? Really? Well, how many fingers am I holding up, then? Three. Wow. I didn't think that was medically possible. Now, look, that is a good sample of your earwax. It's not pretty to look at, but it is brilliant stuff. Earwax is actually a type of sweat. Some people get more than others, just like some people sweat more than others, but everyone has it. When the earwax is produced in your ear canal, it's runny, but it dries out as it works its way out of your ear. This takes about a month and it's helped along by you yawning, chewing, chatting until it flakes out of your ear naturally. So next time you get told off for chatting in class, you could always say you're trying to work out your earwax. Zond, what are you doing? I was just tasting it. I can see that, but why? I guess I just wanted to know what it tasted like. Well, what does it taste like? Actually, it's not very nice. It's very bitter. And that's because earwax is made up of around 40 different substances. The main ones are fatty acids and cholesterol, and none of them taste very nice. Plus the fact that it's been in your ear for about the last month. Anyway, now we know what's in earwax, what's it for? Well, to show you, I've got a model of Zahn's ear. There we go, Zond. Whoa! It's amazing. Hello? Hello? It even sounds like me. Anyway, in the air around us, there are lots of particles of dust and bugs and other stuff. So for this experiment, I'm going to need some giant particles to go with Zahn's giant ear. But as we don't have any giant bugs or dirt to go with the giant ear, these polystyrene balls will have to do. Now, when air passes around us, some of these dirt or bug particles could get into our ears. Watch. With everything else supersized, we thought we'd go for a supersized gust of wind, too. Here it goes. See how many went through the hole? If this was a real ear, all the dust and dirt particles that went through would have clogged up the eardrum and damaged the inner ear behind it. So here's the only problem with this otherwise amazing model. It doesn't have any earwax. So let's smear an earwax-type gunk in there and see what happens. We're coating the big ear with a layer of sticky yellow stuff, a bit like the wax in your ear, and you'll see how it protects your delicate eardrum and the inner ear behind it. Okay. Ready? Here we go again. Oh, that's amazing. That's great. Look, loads of them have stuck in there. But that's what happens every day in your ears. Any unwanted specks of dirt or bugs that get blown near your ears get stuck in your earwax and then moved out of your ear. Which means your eardrum and everything behind it stays safe. The other great thing about your earwax is that the acid in it deters bacteria too, so it keeps infection out. So although it might taste horrible to Zand, it also tastes horrible for bugs. Walking. Most of us don't think about it that much. But what is it? What affects it? And most importantly, why am I wearing this outfit? I'm here at Alder Hay Hospital in Liverpool at a special laboratory, 
the Gate Lab, and I'm going to get some answers. All walks are different, and your own style of walking is your gate. Gate Lab manager Jill Holmes is here to tell me more. People that come to us usually have something wrong with them. The doctors that are looking after them want to understand what it is that is making them walk in an odd way and what do we do about it. So basically, the more you know about someone's walk, the more that doctors can make decisions about how to do surgery, how to reposition muscles, how to help people do exercises to get them better. In this amazing room, sophisticated cameras and computer technology help create 3D models of your walk. So we will look at them very accurately and we'll describe how they're walking and what they're doing wrong. Yes, but why am I dressed in this ridiculous outfit? So that we know where you are and what you're doing, we have to put little markers on you. Time to put my best foot forward. Let's start walking. Off you go. So I've done my walking, and now I'm going to have a look at the 3D model of me and see what's going on. You have got a normal, efficient way of walking. Is this the kind of walk that a, a really cool person would have, like a movie star or a dancer or something like that? Um, it's, it's an ordinary walk. It's an ordinary <laughs> walk. So, my barefoot walk looks good, but most of the time we wear shoes. Are there any kinds of shoes that are bad for you? Um, yes, there are shoes that are bad for you. Shoes that are too small, or girls tend to wear shoes that are too high. You've got something in a different colour. <laughs> Chris can see me now. Jill wants to show me how shoes can affect the way your muscles and joints work. Uh, I'm gaining a bit of confidence now. I think they're quite impressed. But as I discover, it's really hard to walk fast. By looking at my stick figure, you can see that my knees never straighten in heels, which has a big knock-on effect on the rest of my body. So you can see how bad it would be for someone to wear heels the entire time. You'd expect them to have foot problems. You'd expect them to start to have some knee, hip and back problems. In fact, all styles of shoes can affect your body. And no matter what you wear on your feet, it's really important that your shoes fit properly. I've learned that my walk is basically normal. We've also seen how much shoes affect the way you walk. But most tragically, my ambitions to be a catwalk model have been destroyed. Thanks, Jill.